Bro, my mic never wants to work at the very beginning of the shit. Okay. Um. Before I, before I went live, I was just starting to, like, get some, like, materials like this shit for, uh, for the bow that I got. I got this bow, so I'm getting materials for it right now. Like, I got this. I don't know what the hell this is. What are, what are these? Oh, they're underwater. Okay. I don't know how to. I don't know how to fight underwater. All I did. All I do is this. But like, I don't know. Like, if there's like a stronger move or something. Uh. Some weak sections. Oh yeah. I'm going the opposite way. <laughs> I cannot believe they added a whole underwater effect here. I'm just gonna get some of these real quick and then I'll restart. I'll go back to the quest. Oh, there they are. This is all I know how to do. Is there any other way I can, uh... Is this something? Can I get this? Okay. Oh, damn. What's that? What the heck is this thing? This is a boss? Confused. Alright. This man is... How do I get rid of a shield? Ow! I'm just gonna destroy these things because I need them. Try to. Hello? Nothing's hurting this dude. This is doing like literally nothing to him. How do I. How do I destroy a shield? This is the high brush. Spray underwater currents and move characters. Or certain objects. Okay, I know that, but like, okay, what is this enemy? I don't know this enemy. How do I, like, Go 
go underneath. No, I can't be. I can't be underneath. Okay, you know, I'm just gonna like get away from this place. Screw that. I'm just gonna keep doing my thing. I'll find that out later. I don't want to fight that thing now. What's <laughs> with the ballerina? Do I have enough? Alright, I have enough to upgrade a leave once. I just need this stuff, which I can't do until Sunday. Uh, well, that's that. And what about Lynette? Lynette was the other person I need. Uh, I don't know what this is. Uh, found in the north of the Court of Fontaine. Found north of the Court of Fontaine. This is the Court of Fontaine. So like north of the, over up here? No, that's west. Up here, but there's no checkpoint here. Great. Well, let's just go here. Let's see where stuff are. Is it a bell I need? Wait, I passed her, didn't I? Lumido's bell. these things? Could these things be it? Oh my god. No, it's a crystal. I need a bell. I just want enough to the point where I can just upgrade one. Maybe this will work. It's north of the thing of Fontaine, so... It's gotta be somewhere here. I don't really feel like looking it up. There's mint here. Nice mint. Maybe it's on the mountain? Whatever this place is. Looks like there's something shiny up there. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Fruit? That's different. <laughs> Ooh, here? Okay, so that's what they are. So they're at the trees. Oh, shoot, okay. <laughs> 
there's a good amount of them. Did I get all of them? I got that one. Oh. I know there's more locations though. I know that much. That's to me more locations of it, but I think I already have enough. I like how it's like plants too. So I have like a lot of them. You can get a lot of them at once. Oh, they should have enough to do it at least once, All right? Oh, God, where is she? Oh, yeah. My processing speed has become. I almost have enough again. Just need to get this boss again. All right, let's just go to the Archon quest. I keep. Oh wait, no, I still need to do my commissions. Fuck. All right, let's do this. Where am I? Where am I? Where? Where? Where they at? Where they at? All right, there's. There's three. Where's the other one? There. Back here. No, okay, come on. No, come back. Gotcha.
Okay. Four. Five. There you go. Done with that. Let's go back to Fontaine. Thank you for comp Hey. Oh wait, I probably got some Prima gems from this. Because I yeah, I went searching for this stuff. Oh my god. Yeah, I don't know I don't know these things right now. Oh yeah, the Archon Quest. Let's go now. Okay, let me cancel the nav for this thing. Stop. Alright, now where do I go? We're helping Navia do her thing. Oh my god, how do I... I hate this city, bro. I can't get out that way. Bruh. How do I... How do I leave? Without going all the way up there. Guess there is no other way to leave. Oh boy. What the heck? Hi there, bud. Where I need to go? Yeah, it is. Next on the agenda. <sighs> now I just keep running this way. Let me switch to my second team. Draculus. Where is this thing? Ah, it's whatever, fuck it. I'm gonna get this checkpoint real quick. Go. Come on. Go. There you go. Now let's go back up. Huh. According to Malusa's info, uh, we have to go back. I don't want to do that right now. So we can talk and everything underwater. To the Sim production base, it sure doesn't seem out of the ordinary at all. <sighs> ah, you're right. An important place like this is bound to have a ton of protective <sighs> measures and mechanisms. Navia's probably arguing up a storm right now to stall for us. 
No, I want to get the freaking thing. It would appear that I must repeat my question again, Mr. Tartaglia. Do you accept the charge that you are the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case? To be perfectly honest, I don't understand your country's complicated court system or the reason why I'm being charged with something I've never even heard of. However, I did hear that people who have been charged can choose to participate in a duel to clear their name. Is that right? In which case, as long as I accept the charge, I can have an all-out fight with that champion duelist Clorend, right? I've got to admit, that's one of the most enticing offers I've ever received. When I privately sparred with her last time, she was obviously holding back. Real Did he falsely accuse hey, himself don't you so he can fight? You're wow. You're currently the prime suspect for a major case. This isn't the place for you to be looking for fights. Oh? Sounds like the Hydro Archon wants to lecture me on the ways of the Opera House. Then why don't you duel me too? I'm the kind of student that learns best in the heat of battle. No, 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 no. That's not what I meant. Alas, it would appear that communication with the defendant is going poorly. And we have made very little progress. In that case, let me explain everything from the very beginning again. The goal of this trial is to determine the culprit behind the serial disappearances case. <laughs> that case had nothing to do with him. You've got the wrong man. Huh? What's going on? <sighs> Why is she interjecting again? <laughs> I told you it couldn't be one of the Fatui Harbingers. Miss Navia, this is the second time you've interrupted the court proceedings. I only tolerated your behavior last time because you were able to provide the court with a key eyewitness. But that was an exception rather than standard court protocol. I can very well charge you with contempt of court for your interjections. Oh, please. Did you ever think I had any respect for this place's pointless theatrics? We can put that discussion aside for now. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to charge the true culprit behind the serial disappearances case. And if my charges prove true, then Tartaglia here will be proven innocent by default, correct? Oh, a young lady has charged in and offered to clear my name. How fascinating. Well, I'd gotten half bored to death by all these rules and procedures anyway, so I'll take you up on that offer. So, Your Honor, is there nothing else for me to do now? You may take a seat for now in the audience, but that doesn't mean the suspicions against you have been lifted. Now then, Miss Navia, who is the person you would like to charge instead? That person is... Ah, oh, shit. Oh no, I'm not good with this. I'm not good with this. Fine. Okay. Who's the true... Who's the true victim? Or who's the true culprit? Um... Okay. Uh... Crap. 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 Marcel, the head of Confrérie of Cabriere. Huh? What Confrérie? Never heard of them in my life. I've heard of them, but weren't they Spina di Rosula's sister organization? Oh, is this going to be a friends to enemies type situation? Please let me remind you, Miss Navia, that charging someone is an incredibly serious matter. Committing to the charge also means taking on the legal responsibilities associated with it. And if the charge fails, depending on the circumstances, you may also be charged with the crime of making a false accusation. Knowing this, do you still wish to charge this man? Yes, I do. In that case, I declare the charge to be valid. 
Miss Navia and attorneys, please take your places on the court. Members of the guards, please contact Mr. Marcel right away so that he may stand trial. Uh-oh. Mr. Marcel, you will not require an attorney, is that correct? Ah, uh, apologies, sir. It all just happened so quickly, I still haven't figured out what's going on. I think an attorney won't be necessary. This is probably just a misunderstanding between me and Navia. Very well. In that case, since both sides have now arrived, Miss Navia, please present your charges. I would like to take everyone back to three years ago, to the case of Callus the Unfaithful. Only through elucidating what really happened in that case can we connect all the dots for the serial disappearances case. Navia, do you really think that I was the one who killed your father? Come on, why would I do that? Callus was my benefactor, and remember both you and I only ran to the scene when we heard the sound of a gun. If that's enough to make me a suspect, wouldn't that make everyone at that banquet a suspect as well? I... Uh... I think there's no point in getting into the specifics right now. The audience doesn't even have the big picture yet. Even I'm <laughs> struggling to remember some details of that case. Exactly correct, Your Honor. I must refresh everyone's memory about that case before I can explain my charge and reasoning. I see. In which case, I will recount the findings about that case as originally recorded by Maison Guardianage. On the day of the murder, Spina di Rosula hosted a large banquet in a countryside estate owned by the Confrerie of Cabriere. Mm -hmm. During the banquet, all attending guests heard two gunshots from the courtyard. Mm -hmm. When the guests arrived at the scene, they found the primary suspect, Callus, holding a gun, while his acquaintance, Jacques, lay dead from a gunshot wound. Mm -hmm. The guard's investigation did not recover any other firearms from the scene. As a result, they concluded that the suspect's first shot must have missed, while the second must have taken Jacques's life. The suspect did not dispute this conclusion, and also declined to defend himself in court. Instead, he chose to prove his innocence through a duel. Callus was defeated by champion duelist Clarand in the ensuing duel, and soon succumbed to the injuries. These are the known facts about the case. The one with the motive to kill was Jacques, not my father. And even so, Jacques still had no reason to pull the trigger. Uh, in truth, the third person shot Jacques first, and was shot in turn by my father when my father seized the gun from him. After that, the true culprit turned the third person into water, erasing all traces of him from the scene. <clears throat> Thank you for the summary, Your Honor. Of course, the guard's conclusion appeared quite sensible to us at the time. However, we should revisit the case now that we've gained new information about the abilities of water from the Primordial Sea. Select evidence to review banquet now. Two gunshots. of the victim's family confirms that Jacques had thoughts of assassinating Callus when he set out for the banquet. However, in the end he reconsidered and instead shared everything with Callus, hoping to seek the latter's protection. Unfortunately for Jacques, the true culprit had already considered this possibility and had sent out another assassin. Select evidence to refute the scene of the crime. <sighs> no. <sighs> no. This assassin. 
assassin, first shot Jacques, then turned to shoot Callus, only for Callus to wrestle the gun from him and kill him instead. Reconstruction of events. Oh my god. A pile of clothing was found at the scene. The guards once believed they were used by Jacques as a costume to disguise himself. But now, it is clear that the clothes were proof that there was a third person at the scene. And that they were turned into water after committing the murder. Since it was raining that day, the culprit was confident that they could use the rain to wash away all traces of their dissolved accomplice. Nice. Realizing this, the true culprit caused the hired assassin to dissolve into water, leading everyone to believe Callus was responsible for Jacques' murder. This. What happened? Wait, you're telling me something as dangerous as water from the primordial sea has been used for all these years? What a great theory. It also explains Callus's and Jacques's respective motives. I guess they didn't shoot each other after all. Mr. Marcel, you are the one being charged with the crime. You should provide a rebuttal if you wish to prove your innocence. Ah, but I think I agree with everything Navia just said. In fact, there was nothing in her speech that directly implicated me. Then, may I ask some questions? In my opinion, we primarily need to determine two things. Does she even have a vision? One, do you have the evidence to back up your claims? <sighs> I'm afraid not. At least not at this very moment. Boo! <laughs> if you don't have any evidence, you should just go home! I may not have the evidence with me, but I know where I could go to collect it. If we look up the deserted clothes against a record of people who went missing around the same time, we should be able to find a match. Considering the serial disappearances case, the guards probably kept careful records of all missing persons from around that time, regardless of age or gender. That makes sense to me. Monsieur Nouvellet, I would consider this to be a reasonable investigative direction. Huh. Why do I feel like Farina's acting a little differently today? Maybe she's scared of embarrassing herself again? Alternatively, she's become more diligent after charging an innocent citizen in the last trial. My second question has to do with the ensuing duel. If the truth is indeed as you described, then why didn't Mr. Callus explain himself in court? If he had testified that a person had been dissolved, he could have at least mounted a defense. I've thought about this too, and the answer is actually pretty simple. He felt there were things that were more important to him. The dissolving power of water from the primordial sea is an important secret for the true culprit of the serial disappearances case. My father could have exposed it for all to see, but he chose to take it to the grave. At that time, Spina di Rosula was in dire straits, and his reputation had already been shattered. He had no guarantee that going forward with the truth would allow the culprit to be brought to justice. What was certain, however, was that it would paint a gigantic target on my back. Moss once told me that Demoiselle had already been selected as the next target of the serial disappearances case. What? If the secret had gotten out, the culprit would have fought an all-out war with Espina right there and then. I wouldn't have been the only one in danger. All of us would have stood to lose our lives. Of course, the guards might eventually figure out the truth of the matter and determine that we were in the right. But what good would that do? How can a hollow verdict protect anyone? Had this opera house ever given my father any kind of confidence in its brand of justice, Spina di Rosula would have had no reason to exist. But by staying silent, we retain the ability to deter our opponents and continue the stalemate. I was able to become Spina di Rosula's president, which made me harder to target, as well as giving me more time to grow and learn. And once I have figured out the truth and stepped up to the challenge, I will do what this opera house cannot, 
and restore my father's truth and honor back to him. So, you mean to say, your father intended to die in the duelist's ring? That's right. Do you have any proof? Of course. All you need is to ask his opponent, Clorand. <laughs> I don't need your apology, your guilt, or your support from the shadows. You don't have to do anything for my sake. But since he entrusted his will to you, Clorand, you should tell us the truth about his sacrifice. Um, so, during the duel, did you believe that Callus was intending to die? Yes, I did. As a champion duelist, I've fought many battles and taken a countless number of dishonored lives. In my line of work, I've seen all kinds of people give their all for the faintest hope to continue living. Some were determined, others passionate, and some even manic and twisted. Just one look and I can tell if a duelist is hoping to live or if they're looking to die. I hereby swear on my name and honor as a champion duelist that Mr. Callus never intended to leave the ring alive. <sighs> Since that's your testimony, I have no more questions. It appears there really are good grounds to reopen this case. I concur. However, Miss Navia, you still have not explained the link between your father's case and the serial disappearances case. Right? What she said was fascinating, but kind of beside the point. Wait, weren't they just talking about the serial disappearances case? Of course, Your Honor. The two cases are connected via a matter of timing. In my father's case, the culprit intended to kill both Jacques and Callus. As a result, they planned to act after hearing two gunshots. And, at the end of Linny's trial, the culprit also only dissolved the victim in front of everyone because they realized they were at risk of being identified. The culprit could only time their actions so precisely if they were already at the scene. Coincidentally, Marcel attended both the banquet and the trial. So that's why you suspected me. <sighs> Even after hearing your reasoning, I still can't help but find it a little preposterous. I'm used to it, though. You've always been an impulsive and sentimental child, Navia. It's one of your most endearing traits. No need to appeal to pathos. I won't try to refute your points one by one, but even if everything you just said was true, can you prove that I was the only person present at both events? On top of that, does a person have to be physically present to control the timing? Can't someone remotely monitor the place? Uh... Don't know what she can say to that. I know that even with that, you might still think you can reduce the list of suspects with some further investigations, until I'm the only one left on the list. Alas, who won't feel at least a little hurt by an accusation of murder from a girl you see as your own daughter? But if I were to dismiss this completely, you'd also think I'm not being considerate of your feelings. Ah well, let Uncle Marcel teach you another lesson. Do you know what the biggest flaw in your reasoning is? I suppose you're gonna tell me anyways. It's timing again. I'm a businessman by trade. From that standpoint, there's no reason for me to kidnap young women. It's a high-risk action with nothing to gain. In addition, I left my home in Snezhnaya when I was young to come to Poisson and work in some trade. My business only thrived when I received Callus's patronage. But the disappearances began before I ever stepped foot in Fontaine. Uh, I do apologize, Demoiselle. This was my mistake. No, it's not your fault. I'm sure he had come prepared. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Would you like to check the date of my first business license against the first known case of the serial disappearances? You can also take a look at my border entry records, or ask my friends and family when I left Snezhnaya for the first time. Could those records and testimonies do something to appease the unspeakable anguish in your heart? Oh, seems like she got the wrong guy. At this rate, Navia will be convicted for falsely accusing him. I think you've done a superb job of dissecting your father's feelings as he neared the end of his life. 
But aren't you going against all of his wishes and expectations right now? He wished for you to become more rational, collected, and conscientious, instead of dwelling only on your own feelings. Once you've learned to be more considerate of others' feelings, and to stop rushing headlong into things, you'd have met most of his expectations. This isn't just about me, and it never has been. The biggest difference between me and the rest of the victims is that I still have the ability to search for the truth. While that same agency has long been taken from then, the people whose families were destroyed by synth abuse, the people who lost their loved ones to the serial disappearances, and the people who suffered tragic ends due to their sense of justice. Many people's images are flashing before my eyes. I'm sure some are coming to those of you in the audience as well. And whose image do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? Huh. <sighs> oh, so you do know that name. I've merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Oh yeah, we're finally getting to it. <laughs> So we were playing as Navia there, basically. <laughs> Party setup. Oh shit, okay. It's a domain? Oh shit, okay. Illusion shattered! Enhanced animal module 75! Absorption test! Stay clear! the stream. Hmm. 
Great! Enhanced Panama Module 75! Though, as expected, the Mastermind isn't here. Ah, that's right. Then let's hurry up and find some evidence so we can get back to the Opera House and help Navia! What's all this? Accessories, a hair tie, a necklace, even a makeup box. Oh, Paimon sees it too, but why are all these cute things labeled with different girls' names? Huh? You mean the girls from the serial disappearances? They were brought here? And then they were turned into water. And all the boxes of things. These names... That means... Whoa! There's so much synth here! And so many bottles of ingredients that probably just contain the waters of the primordial sea. Hmm... Mixing in progress, ready to drink, stock sample? Huh, they've also got all the synth pretty clearly labeled. Whoa, there's even fruit flavored synth? Yep, it's super obvious. written here. Nothing escapes Detective Paimon's eyes! Hmm... Callus... Navia's father... Oh, this seems to be an investigation report on him! Hmm... Hmm... Yep! It's about finding someone to assassinate Jacques and Callus because of a lack of confidence that Jacques himself would go through with it! This should prove the existence of the third person, right? Hmm... We still have not determined the exact content of the key information Callus has passed on to certain members of his organization. The old dog's a real menace to deal with. Even if he abides by the promise he's made to us, he will still have the upper hand. He can act whenever he wants to make our lives miserable. The only option left is to remove him from the picture entirely. I concur. Let's send someone to kill him. He won't declare war as long as we don't touch Navia. Oh, seems like we've got a bunch of correspondence between the higher-ups. <laughs> They're all just so evil. I hope we make it back in time. Is there something else? Oh. Oh, look! There's an important looking basin over here! And it's full of water! That means this is where they make all the synth! And that special water is the main ingredient! If you dilute it with normal water, you'll get synth! But the pure stuff can dissolve a human! Paima will take notes on this incriminating evidence! There more? Oh, 
what's this over here? Looks like some kind of place for research. Experiment number 16 aims to verify Jacob Ingold's research conclusions on the primordial sea and use his theory as a foundation to achieve a breakthrough. The experiment was a failure. No individual managed to resurface from the water from the primordial sea. Female specimens 22, 23, and 24 were dissolved! <coughs> Sorry, Traveler. Paimon will try her best. It's just... that... Paimon's never read something so scary before! How could someone write something that terrible in such a matter-of-fact tone? You read the rest. Paimon's too scared to keep going. Vignair sounds similar to Vacher. So that's why you did all of these experiments. Maybe Vacher is who the who it is. Yeah, there's another name here. Vache. Huh? Isn't that the name you heard by the fountain? Paimon thought he was an eyewitness in the serial disappearances case. Ah, <sighs> you mean Vache is the one who did all of these... Uh, experiments? So yeah, I knew it. it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I should be a lawyer. I should be an attorney. I I I knew it. I knew it. Oh my god. No, that's not it either. If that's the case, why would he want people to resurface from the water? In any case, Paimon will write it all down. We've looked at almost everything here, and it seems like our theories were spot on. But, yeah, we haven't found anything that reveals his true identity. No wonder even Nervalette wasn't able to find anything. Whoever it is probably destroyed everything to do with that name a long time ago. That way, even if we bring all this back to the opera, we won't be able to identify the true culprit. Sure thing, Paimon won't admit defeat to this guy either. You take that side and Paimon will take this side. Check everything carefully. Do you see, Marcel? Is it a man named Vache? <laughs> oh, so you do know that name. <laughs> I'm merely surprised you'd suddenly say the name of someone I've never even heard of. I was waiting for you to say that. Navia, we're back! Uh, as expected of my partner, I just knew you'd return in the nick of time. Just how often do you intend to flout the rules of this court? 
It's all right, Monsieur Nervalette. Given their confidence, I expect they've found the crucial evidence. Bro, I feel like I'm in a freaking English class. But the truth of it, Marcel, is that you've always been Vache. Huh? We've investigated your lair and we already know everything! After your lover, Veneer, was dissolved, you kept abducting young women to experiment on the hopes of bringing her back to you! You even created Marcel as a new identity and destroyed all records of your past as Vache! So that's it. Even the villains in opera performances rarely go that far. And with that, Marcel's motive has now been established. This information regarding your past also dismantles your prior timing defense. Well, Marcel, do you know where you went wrong? <sighs> you fixated your gaze on the lover that passed away, instead of paying attention to the living people around you. So, you never noticed how we changed, or how we grew as individuals. You also never understood Boss's real expectations for his daughter. Or our determination to see things through. Your determination? <laughs> Mr. Marcel, please speak up now if you would like to defend yourself. Otherwise, the trial will move on to the next stage. Do you think... Do you really think I wanted to do any of this? Pay attention to you? <laughs> what for? Have you ever paid attention to me? Ever empathized with my pain? Ever known how it feels to watch the love of your life dissolve right in front of your eyes? No one helped me. No one even believed me. All those decades ago, even the officers from the Maison Guardianage were laughing at me. They said there's no way a human being can turn into water. So I must have gone mad from grief. Vinyar's death was brushed away by all of you as if it didn't matter at all. Well, now you know, don't you? Ha! Well, it's too late now. All those who were dissolved are gone forever. You only have yourselves to blame. You set up this ornate opera house in pursuit of your so-called justice. Your beloved drama, while turning a blind eye to the suffering of the people. Vignier is dead. We promised each other that we would always be together. Wherever she goes, I will follow. But I'm not from this blasted place, so I can't be dissolved, no matter what I do. I can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! Can't dissolve! <laughs> Do you all see? I can't go! I can't follow! So if I can't go where she is, what choice do I have but to try to bring her back? I did all of that, and in the end, that accursed callous still got the better of me. I spent my entire life living on pins and needles! only to get stabbed by his idiot daughter at the very end. <laughs> the suspect is exhibiting signs of mental distress. Guards, please restrain him. Don't touch me! Don't anybody come near me! I still need to save Vignier. Her promise! We made a promise! Vignier! Vignier! Please, Vignier, oh, don't think badly of me. All I want to do is fulfill our promise. That's why Vignier was telling us, she was constantly telling us not to follow her anymore. Not, like, to, she was telling us to tell him not to follow her anymore. Not to try to get her and everything. At this point, the verdict of this trial is clear. With Mr. Marcel's conviction, the charges against Mr. Tartaglia no longer have any basis. Fine by me. I was in a bad mood, but after a show like that, I'm actually feeling pretty good. Traveler, 
Please submit all the evidence you have collected to the guards, so that I might review and summarize the truth behind the serial disappearances case. The man now known as Marcel was originally named Varche, and worked as an adventurer with his partner and lover, Vignier. During an underwater expedition, Vignier accidentally came into contact with water from the primordial sea, and was dissolved in front of Varche as a result. Varche learned of the primordial water's existence through the work of others, and began to kidnap young women for research, with the goal of discovering a method to restore Vignier back to life. To cover his tracks, he invented the new alias of Marcel, and began to operate a business in Poisson. During the course of his research, Marche discovered that a diluted concoction of water from the primordial sea can induce feelings of euphoria, and began to manufacture and market synth. However, as he accumulated wealth to fund his continued research and expanded the scope, he came into conflict with Spina di Rasula. After exchanging blows with Spina di Rasula for many years, Varche decided to assassinate their president, Callus, at a banquet. Although the assassination did not go as Varche expected, he was able to turn Callus into the murder suspect by dissolving the assassin he sent to the scene. And just recently, Varche attempted to frame Linny as the culprit of the serial disappearances case using a similar method. However, his attempt to frame Linny failed, and the power of water from the primordial sea became public knowledge. This case also exposed enough of Arche's machinations that he was eventually successfully charged in court. Thus concludes the enigmatic history of the serial disappearances case, with the truth revealed to all. The Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vache. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mécanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Vache is guilty. Away. Good. Hydro Archon is like deserves. useless. Uh, with that, mm. the serial disappearances case is over now. We really just witnessed history. Who would have thought the true culprit would be such a polite and well spoken guy? Yippee! We helped Navia bring the bad guy to justice! He's hurt so many innocent people and now he's finally getting what he deserves! Huh? Are you okay? <sighs> Demoiselle, you were absolutely brilliant. The day our late boss had always hoped for has finally come. You can rest easy now, knowing justice has been served. Yeah. Yeah. It's finally over. It's all thanks to you guys. And my partner. <sighs> See, Papa? Spina di Rosula still doing well with me at the helm. Well now, hasn't this been a most delicious piece of drama? The villain has been caught, justice has been served, past wrongs have been righted, and it's a big ol' happy ending. Since it's been such a great show, I'll just let the false accusations against me slide. Either way, I've still got some business to attend to, so if you'll excuse me... Please wait just one moment, Mr. Tartaglia. Ugh, what now? None of this has anything to do with me. According to court protocol, since this trial was initiated due to a charge against you, a verdict must also be made regarding the initial charge before the trial can conclude. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? Haven't you already caught the real criminal? Isn't it time for side characters like me to exit stage left? <laughs> Please respect the laws of Fontaine. This has always been the rule. All right, all right, but this sure is a lot of hassle. All I need to do is stand over there, right? Let's just get this over with. Through evidence presented in the public trial that was just held, it has been established that Mr. Tartaglia has no direct connection to the serial disappearances case. The guilty party has been identified, 
And thus, it is logical to suppose Mr. Tartaglia is innocent of the charges. We now turn to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinale to render the final verdict on the charges. Hmm. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinale, Mr. Tartaglia is guilty. What? Hey, hey! That's not funny! Didn't you just say I'm supposed to be innocent? What's with this verdict? Is your justice machine malfunctioning? Huh? This has never happened before. The Oratrice actually returned a different verdict from the Chief Justice. I mean, have you ever heard of an innocent Fatui Harbinger? Do you think the Oratrice might have just convicted him on general principle? But weren't the charges about the serial disappearances case? No matter what else he's guilty of, it shouldn't affect the verdict in this case, right? The judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinale is, by law, the final verdict of the court. We must accept the guilty verdict. Guards, please take the suspect into custody per court protocol. <coughs> really? <coughs> you're you're relying on a machine. You're you're relying on a, on a machine rather than your own your own like wisdom and thoughts and everything. You're re relying on your a machine that. that what? Oh, oh god. So this is how justice is done in Fontaine. What a joke. <laughs> You've got your rules. Well, I've got mine too! Oh, he's using the armor. <laughs> I am sorry. If you have been wronged, we will find the truth. But the rules of the court must be upheld. He got a hit on his cheek. Yep. Hey, Monsieur Nouvellet, what's going on? Shouldn't they have been cleared already? Apologies. This is also the first time I've encountered such a situation. However, according to the rules established at the conception of Fontaine's court system, the Oratrice's judgment is the final verdict of the court. All I do is follow court procedure. As for why the Oratrice arrived at the conclusion it did, you should probably ask someone more knowledgeable than me. Uh, why are you looking at me? I had nothing to do with it! I, I don't know what happened there either! Hey, stop staring at me! What does Lady Farina mean by that? She says she has no idea either, but that's impossible. Didn't she create the Oratrice herself? She yeah, is not so the Hydro Archon. Can results like this really be called justice? <sighs> My dearest citizens, did you really think we'd allow an incorrect verdict to be handed out in this court? Did you really believe that the judgment could be mistaken, or be the result of some sort of random mishap? Don't tell me. You thought even I had been blindsided by the Oratrice's result. But the way she looked just now, it was pretty obvious she had no idea what was going on. However, given the state of things, I shall give you an explanation. Everything that just took place, including my supposed shock and bafflement, 
was a part of an elaborate performance, with every action meant to stir up drama and excitement. And, <laughs> of course, for every performance, there is a script. Everything has unfolded exactly as I expected from the very beginning. As the embodiment of the very concept of justice, the Oratrice shall never render an arbitrary judgment! If you thought Child had nothing to do with the serial disappearances case, it is only because you've been blinded by the superficial appearance of innocence. Everything he's done, not to mention the danger he poses, are beyond ordinary comprehension and completely unforgivable! All shall be revealed in time. You will come to understand my noble intentions, as well as the absolute correctness of the Oratrice's verdict. <laughs> now, having said that, although I hate to leave things hanging in suspense, it is now time for this performance to end. As the lead actress, I shall be the first to take my leave. Does she even have a vision? So she chose to make her escape after all, did she? Uh, so you're saying we shouldn't put much stock into what she just said? Hmm. She probably just put on that performance to save face. As for the truth, it's unlikely that she actually has any idea. However, please be assured that I will continue to investigate this case in a personal capacity. Just as I promised. If the judgment has been incorrect, we will do our utmost to clear his name. She is not the Hydro Archon. There is no way. Take your word for it for now. I know Nahida said she has a unique personality, and she does, this woman. But there is no way. I I am not believing she is the Hydro Archon until some wise wisdom type power type shit history type shit happens. For now, I just see her as someone like Fischl that's just really annoying and not wise or anything. I don't, I don't even know if she has a vision. She might not even have a vision. Hey, what are you doing? Quick, stop him! Traveler! Hey! Traveler! Stop resisting arrest! Cease, or we'll add another charge to the list! No, 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 wait! I, I just want to ask the Traveler something. I I'm not looking to run away. Please, please, just let me ask this one small thing. Go on. Thank you. Thank you. I was being led away when I finally realized something. Where did you first hear the name Vache? I erased all records of that name. So... Unless... Are you still trying to prove your innocence? Give it up, you've already been convicted. Uh, really? Y y you did? You're sure? You met her? But how could that be? How did you manage to do it? The Fountain of Lucene? Then... Then she's been so close to me all along! And I just never... Please, please give me a chance to talk to her again. Just let the Traveler take me to the Fountain to see her one last time. This is the last request I'll ever make in my life. You can do whatever you want to me afterwards. I don't care. What? Give an inch and you want to take a mile? Do you think serial killers get to make requests like that? Hmm. Paimon agrees. Why should we give him what he wants when he's only done a ton of super terrible things? This request, is it worth as much to you as your life? Of course! Wait, no. It's worth even more than my life. Humans, will they betray the instinct to live just to satisfy spiritual needs? Very well. I will grant your request. Your Honor, I fear that- I will go with him. You do not need to worry about any escape. <sighs> in that case, I shall leave him in your most capable hands, Chief Justice. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Didn't we tell him to forget? Didn't we? Weren't we supposed to tell him to forget about her? Is 
this the place? You said she's here, but what do I need to do to see her? Yeah, and even Paimon can hear her after drinking that thing. Didn't you just drink a lot of it on the stage as well? Oh, in that case... Vashe! Ah! Yes, that's it! So you heard it too! Vinier, it's me! It's me, Vashe! Vashe? Vashe? I'm here! I'm here! Where are you, Vinier? I'm coming for you! I'm finally here for you! Hey, wait! Be careful! Hey, wait! Vinier, is that you? It's me, Vashe! Vinier! Vashe? Why did you come? Didn't I say? You don't need to look for me. You... You look a lot older than I remember. How long has it been? It's been more than 20 years. I've suffered for over 20 years since the day you left. All this time, only the thought of bringing you back has kept me alive. Nothing else mattered to me. Oh, I must be dreaming. Who would have thought I'd get the chance to tell you all of my feelings like this? Vinier, you are my everything. I really don't know how I could live without you. But Vache, if you ask me, this world would be better off without you. Oh, damn. Oh no. Oh shit. Damn. Oh, that is that must have hurt. That must have hurt. Oh my god. If not for you, I would have finished my law degree and probably become a top-tier attorney one day. If not for you, I would have continued to pursue my love of the arts. And my works would have been displayed in the Palais Mermonia itself. If not for you, I would at least have been able to take care of my mother. And she would not have grown old and died alone, with nothing but the tears on her cheeks. It's all because of your selfishness, Vashe. Dang. It's all because of you. Is he having nightmares right now? You... Wait, you are not Vinier. Who are you? You're right. I am not Vimier. I am the sacrifices. All the sacrifices he made with the dis disappearing girls? Every woman who died yeah. by your hand. As our bodies dissolved, our consciousnesses flowed back to the primordial sea. Our thoughts circulated endlessly within the primordial sea. And we were no longer individuals. I'm Cressy. I'm Lemony. I'm Azine. The only one I am not is Vignere. Why? But then, where is Vignere? She doesn't want to see you anymore. Every tendril of her consciousness is avoiding you. This is what you get for your selfishness. Your selfishness robbed us of our lives and our futures. You said time and time again that you'd do any and everything for her. Dang. But did you ever consider whether she'd want to see you do the things that you did? If she would despise you for what you became? I, um, I... You are a liar, a heartless murderer, and a cowardly narcissist. The only thing you are not is Vignere's beloved. From the moment your first victim died and her consciousness merged with Vignere's, she has had nothing but pure hatred for you. No! Vignere! She can't hate me. Let me see her. Please, have mercy. You still don't understand. When I said don't look for me, that came from the real Vignere. She really doesn't want to see you anymore. But on top of that, she also said that because it's her final drop 
of pity for you. She said that because she knew that if you did come here, we will show no mercy to you. Vashe. 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 Drown. to relax. Huh. Well met, partner. I knew something great was going to happen when I woke up in such a good mood today. Even this weather can't put a damper on the demoiselle's mood. It's a pleasure to see you both again. Oh, hey, Navia! It's been a few days. Paimon's already started to miss you. Oh, now that I believe. I'm easy to work with and always bring home the bacon. Who wouldn't treasure having a partner like me? <laughs> Sounds like you're really enjoying life these days, Navia. What have you been busy with since the trial? <sighs> it's just been one thing after the other. I've been making non-stop trips between Poisson and the court since then. Everyone from Spina di Rosula organized a memorial for my father. We never held a memorial when he first died, since everyone knew that even if we held one back then, no one was going to come. This time, though, everyone in Poisson, and even many people from the court, all attended. <sighs> so his name definitely been cleared now. That's what we like to hear. It's been the dearest wish of Demoiselle all along. <laughs> that blasted, stubborn fool. I was right to put my faith in him. <sighs> I'm so glad I didn't give up on the case all those years ago. Oh. By the way, I ran into Charlotte just after I left the memorial service. Who's Charlotte? Uh, well, maybe it'd be more accurate to say I knew she would be there, and there was no way she'd just let me go. Huh? Oh, the reporter. Do you know Charlotte too? Yeah, the journalist. Charlotte? Journalist from the Steambird? Yeah, way back when I first became the president of the Spina di Rosula, she was all over me. Wouldn't take no for an answer. I believe the story was called The True Heart of Darkness, Secret Tales of the Yellow Rose. To be fair, though, it was a really flattering feature. <laughs> so we've been on pretty good terms ever since. She was trying to lean on our friendship to get me to do an exclusive piece on the serial disappearances case. Oh, yeah. She told us about that. She's always been super interested in that case, so now her wish has finally come true, too. Anyway, I told her to make sure that when she writes about you guys entering the opera house with the critical evidence, that you both sound really cool. <laughs> now that's another thing to look forward to. We trust Charlotte's skills with a pen for sure. Oh, and in other news, I also took Clorand out for a meal. Oh, are you two on better terms now? Mm, while you were investigating Vache's headquarters, Clorand gave testimony on my father's behalf. It was thanks to her that we were able to turn the tide. I wanted to thank her. I mean, <laughs> there's also no point in being awkward all the time. So we took the chance to reconcile with each other. Oh, that's great. Paimon also thought Clorand wasn't actually a bad person. It anyway, now that the case has finally been solved, perhaps it will slowly begin to fade from the public consciousness. Oh, actually... There's still one last thing I need to do. What is it? I should pay a visit to my father's grave and tell him the truth of what happened, as well as how it all ended. And on top of that, just how much people still look up to him to this day. That includes me, too. Miss Navia. Indeed. Mm -hmm. We want to go, too. We also think Callus is a really admirable person. Sure thing. I'd like you two to share the moment with me. After all, without you, there might not have been such a positive ending. And in that case, everyone, let's be off. 
seconds. Yeah, you're right. It's been raining non-stop for a few days now. Huh. This is where my father's grave is. Hmm. To be perfectly honest, even I haven't been back here for... a long time. Huh? There's someone there already. Wait... That figure... It can't be... Hmm? Isn't that Nervalet? Why would the Chief Justice be here? Huh? Navia? Hmm. Hmm. My apologies. I should have asked before coming to pay my respects. Don't say that. Sorry about that. Oh, uh, I was trying to say there's no need for you to apologize. I wanted to show my father how much I've grown. But still, I doubt I've grown to the point that even the Chief Justice would feel compelled to apologize to me over and over. In that case, I will stop apologizing for now. Hmm. You really could use some pointers on understanding human emotions, Monsieur Nervillet. In any case, why did you come to Poisson? Hmm. Well, ever since that day, I've been turning a question over and over in my head. Just what is justice, anyway? There was once a time when I didn't want to believe that there could be anything more important to humans than life itself. Oh, rather than that, it's probably more truthful to say I didn't believe humans were capable of resisting the most basic instinct of living things. That they could rebel against their own nature, or consider certain things to be more important than their own lives. Which is also why I didn't stop your father from beginning that fateful duel. I believed that a truly innocent man would never throw away his life like that. That there was nothing, should have been nothing more important than one's own continued survival. But Mr. Callus proved me utterly and decisively wrong. If not for his sacrifice, the serial disappearances case would have remained unsolved to this day. Mr. Callus made the choice he did for his daughter, for his associates, and for many people completely unrelated to him. And in the end, from a certain perspective, one could say that he did it all for the sake of justice. A justice that's higher than life itself. So, you asked me why I came here. I just wanted to say my apologies to Mr. Callus in person. I should have noticed all of this much sooner. This regret has filled me with a sadness that has haunted me for days. That high and mighty chair in the opera Epicles indeed insulates one from many important things. Spina di Rosula. Thank you so much for your hard work and perseverance. Uh, I'm sorry for being mad at you before. So, you're actually one of those types that's cold on the outside, but pretty thoughtful on the inside, huh? So dear. That reminds me of Silver, one of my guys. Sorry about that. Self-expression is not one of my strong suits. <sighs> Didn't I just say you don't need to apologize? Ah, so Navia and Nervalette seem to have made their peace as well. Let's not disturb them for now. We can wait till after they're done. <sighs> Paimon's never paid respects at someone's grave before. Uh... Did Paimon do anything rude there? Huh? Oh, Paimon didn't know that was a thing? But Paimon doesn't know what she would do if she can't fly! Oh no! Paimon hopes Miss Navia won't be too mad! Anyway, Nervalette is still standing around there. It's not often that we can catch him alone like this, so... Why don't we go talk to him for a bit? If we can't talk to Lady Farina, we can at least talk to him, right? Oh, it's you two. Did Miss Navia invite you to come pay your respects to her father? Mm-hmm. We ran into Navia on the streets today, so we just followed her here. I see, I see. 
Then is there something that I can help you with? Uh, um, well, it's pretty hard to run into you like this since you're usually super busy. So we figured we could try to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Please feel free. Though outsiders, you helped us solve one of the greatest mysteries in Fontaine, and it would be my pleasure to return the favor. Your sibling, another blonde-haired traveler. I'm sorry, but I've never seen anyone who matches that description. If he ever stepped foot in Fontaine, I'm sure he followed our laws to the letter and had no reason to appear on the stage of the opera Epicles. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? My apologies. My investigation has still not reached its conclusion. However, I still believe the judgment of the Oratrice was not rendered arbitrarily. But you also said you thought he was innocent! For many years, I have been quite aware that the Oratrice does not simply mechanically repeat the verdict that I give on each case. As a divinely created mechanism, the people's unified faith in the concept of justice is integrated into it. Not only can it produce the incredible power of indemnitium, but it likely also possesses other traits, such as self-awareness. Which is all to say, I have been prepared for a situation like this for a long time. Mm -hmm. So when Linny told us that he heard a human voice from the room where the Oratrice's core is stored... I was not aware such a thing had occurred. Perhaps that could serve to prove my conjecture. I will add that to the list of items to investigate. In any case, I am inclined to believe that the Oratrice does have a methodology all its own. We just do not have enough information. Based on Farina's reaction, I doubt even she had any idea what was going on. She managed to bluff her way through it, though. The time-tested twin tricks of bravado and drama. While we do intend to get to the bottom of this, for now, we regret to say that the Fatui Harbinger will just have to bide his time in the fortress of Meripede. If we did incorrectly convict him of crimes he did not commit, we will most certainly compensate him to the fullest extent allowed by the law. If you ask Paimon, the only compensation he'll want is a no-holds-barred fight with you. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? So, at court, the bad guys referred to that special water as water from the primordial sea, but... what is it really? Truthfully, that name is already quite accurate. I can only surmise that Vache and his ilk only learned of its nature and existence after extensive research. There used to be a special sea on the surface of this planet. The nature of its seawater was rather different from that of the sea we know today. Most of Tevat's life forms were first born in that special sea. You could say it nurtured much of the life on this planet. Huh. So it really was where everything began. It makes sense to call it primordial, then. But today, the Primordial Sea no longer exists on the planet's surface. What Vashe discovered must have been some kind of special case, or a remnant from a truly ancient age. Huh. So that's how it is. Oh, you really know everything, Monsieur Nervalet. But if that's the case, then why would people... Uh, at least people from Fontaine dissolve in that kind of water? Indeed. Why would the Primordial Sea, which was known to engender and nurture life, suddenly reverse itself and devour life instead? To be frank, that also doesn't match my understanding of this world and its laws. There must still be some unknown secrets around the people of this land. Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? That the sea levels will rise and everyone will be dissolved in water, leaving Farina crying alone on her throne, but the sins of the people will be finally washed away for good? Does that appropriately summarize the version you've heard? That's right! It was Linny that told us back then! And that about covers all the main points! Yes, up to the present, I think we reached a point where we have no choice but to confront this prophecy directly. 
Rumors have it that this prophecy is rooted in the last words the former Hydro Archon left to the world before she passed away. A prophecy? Of the former Hydro Archon? Wow. This is the first time that we've ever heard of it. Two parts of the prophecy have already proven correct. The rising sea levels and the ability of the people of Fontaine to be dissolved. We should be more vigilant and stay on the watch for further signs. Speaking of the prophecy, Farina has also always taken it quite seriously. Indeed, she has been collecting information and intelligence from across Tevat for this purpose. If the rumors were true, then perhaps this prophecy is the conundrum left to Farina by her predecessor. But with Farina being the way she is, can we really trust her to solve it? Is there anything else you'd like to ask me about? Very well. It was my honor to provide you with what answers I could. I very much enjoyed conversing with you. It will soon be time for me to leave this blissful tranquility behind and return to Palais Memonia. You really are super busy, Monsieur Nervalette. Paimon thought you only came here to pay your respects today because you had the day off. Crime and villainy do not have the day off, and so justice must work around the clock as well. This is merely the nature of a justice's work. All right, all right, you've got a point. Huh? Paimon just noticed that the rain has stopped. Complete. Ah, uh, so we're not done yet, are we? No, there's still more. Oh no, there isn't. We have to wait for it to come out now. That was all? Oh crap. Did all of them. So now we can focus on like grinding shit out and everything. Oh, and I can switch to Fontaine. Yes, I can switch to Fontaine uh, stuff. There you go. Fontaine, Fontaine, uh, commissions already it doesn't look like I'll be leaving Fontaine anytime soon oh and here oh wow and here's the uh, reputation shit I need to be level 2 to get that shit. Which means I need to do quests. There we go, and then I just need Yoimiya's, Yoimiya's story quest. Yeah. 
Alright, I'll be right back though. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a small break and then I'll do you and me as quest. <sighs>
Okay, I'm back. I'm here. <sighs> I'm 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 back. All right. So now we have to do. Yeah, Yoimiya. Whoa, what? Yoimiya is preparing for romantic journey. Well, let's get this shit over with then. Let's let's get it. Let's get her done, boys. I'm returning in Azuma. After this, I'm probably gonna be in Fontaine for a, a long while. Actually, before I do this, let's go to Liyue because I, I still need to level up my Yan Yan Yanfei. I need to level up my Yanfei, and I think all I need is just this boss's materials. And then I also need to level up uh, Kale, which might take a while because I need her some of her materials still. Uh, where's Yanfei? Okay, I got all the shit for Yenfei. And I don't have anything for... For Kali. Like, nothing. That may take a while. Wait, what is her attack at? 2,356, I mean, that's good. I mean, it's mainly because of her ascension material, that's why. So my two big damage dealers in this in this team is Sucrose and Hutao. And then we just have Raiden Shogun and Kokomi supporting them with elemental shit and healing. Illusion shattered. go now let's go back to Inazuma and do this quest it's the Oimiya's quest the best quest she's my I think I think she's my highest dealing damage person and he's my she's my strongest character I think oh, fuck it, I'll, I'll keep this Yeah, I think she's my strongest character. I'm surprised they made an act two of her. So like, out of my people, it's probably Yoimi is Yoimi is definitely my strongest, and then after that would probably be Ganyu, and then Kuching. But yeah, Yoimi is my strongest per my strongest character. Have you packed all your things? Make sure you brought the onigiri and rice cakes your mother prepared. Don't worry. I have them all. They're going to last me days. Take care of yourselves while I'm out. And make sure you remind mom to take her medicine on time. If running the store gets a bit too much, take some time off and wait for me to return. Oh, Yoi Mia. Your mother and I got so worried when we heard that you were going so far abroad. We've never left the country. 
So we don't know how outlanders might go on to Sumeru? Humans, or if they'd even be willing to speak to us. Oh, relax. Outlanders are friendly and warm. Look at Toma from the Yashiro Commission. He's originally from Mondstadt, but everyone thinks he's a top tier guy. He's from Mondstadt? I don't know that. A mop tier? What mop? Oh, do you mean the broken one at home? I just fixed it today, actually. No, I said top, not mop. <sighs> you know, Toma even sent us some wine from his homeland not too long ago. <sighs> we haven't heard this kind of friendly banter in a while, huh? Oh, hey you two. It's been a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> I'm excited because I'm going on a trip soon. Many things have changed. Lots of outlanders have come to Inazuma, and lots of Inazumans have gone out as well. You two have been adventuring all over to that, so you might not be able to understand. But for us, this is a long-awaited chance to go out and fulfill our dreams. That's right. The Sakoka Decree is gone. Ah, oh, I remember you two. You're Yoimiya's friends, yes? Word of your incredible accomplishments has spread throughout Inazuma. My daughter's a big fan of yours. She said she'd love to be like you two. <laughs> Come on, Dad. Who's never dreamed of becoming a hero? Oh, thanks. But I'm just your average artisan. The quiet life suits me better. But if an opportunity presents itself, why not try to show your stuff, right? All right. Did you two come over today to order some fireworks? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry. I got carried away. Well, I am gone. Dad's in charge of making fireworks. You've seen how skilled he is, so there's nothing to worry about. Oh, no. We aren't here to do business or anything. We just happen to be passing by. Oh, so we're all here with time to spare? What a treat! In that case, let's chat some more. I'm not in a rush anyway. Sure. So, where are you planning to go? No clue. Huh? <laughs> I say that, but I do have a travel goal. To see Tibet's grandest meteor shower. But I don't know when or where it'll happen. So, I figured I can search while I travel. That's it? No details? Nothing? Uh, not right now. Since this meteor shower was originally something like a family legend. A long time ago, the Naginaharas were inspired to create new fireworks after watching such a meteor shower. Dad says that inspiration is a combination of what you see and what you know. Different people can see the same thing, but have different thoughts. Inazuma today is completely different from how it was in the past. If I can see this meteor shower, I'm sure I'll be able to come up with a new kind of firework. I know, right? Of course, my main reason is that I won't go and look outside Inazuma. <laughs> No need to be shy about it. You gotta play hard when you get the chance. You know, you're right, Paimon. Is it just me, or have you gotten wiser since we first met? <laughs> Paimon loves being friends with you since you say such nice things. Sumeru. Oh yeah, so we are going to Sumeru. It has a ton of trees, a super impressive school, and a massive desert. Yep. And everyone there is really smart, so Paimon's sure you'll get some answers from them about the meteor shower. Really? But won't research people make fun of me or something if I ask them about a legend? We won't know if something's real or not unless we ask. Don't worry, we got solid connections in there. Well, she does anyway. Wouldn't I be taking up your time, though? I doubt this was in your schedule. Exactly! Relax, Yarnia. You've helped us plenty of times before. <laughs> Alright, then I accept your offer. And so we're so we're going to Sumeru with Yoimiya? That's awesome. Dad! You can have more peace of mind now that I'm traveling with them, right? Hmm? Oh, yes. Your mother and I will be much more at ease. Remember, you two also need to take care of yourselves. I'll be back soon. Okay, let's head to Rito and catch a boat there. Oh, that's awesome! So we're actually gonna we're actually gonna see a me we're actually gonna see a meteor shower. That's sick. Huh. 
Rito. I haven't been to Rito at all in a while. <laughs> you board a passenger ship found by bound for poor almost. Enjoying the lovely ocean views along the way. Listens with rapt attention as you travel the deepest on decree and your various adventures in Sumeru. The long voyage ends before you know it. Wow! So, this is Sumeru? That tree's huge! Is the port built on top of it? And this place is amazing! It's way bigger than Rito's port! There are also a lot more stores here. Oh, there's more cool stuff for you to see. Don't you worry! This place is awesome! I had heard people describe it, but nothing beats seeing a place for yourself. If I hadn't seen the port with my own eyes, I could never have imagined such a place. So, the school you were talking about, the Academia? Is it here? Nope. We have to head north from here and follow the river to reach Sumeru City. Sumeru City, huh? I guess it's even more impressive than here? Even bigger? Oh, I wonder if it's as grand as Sanganomiya Shrine. Whatever the case, why don't we go to Sumeru City? Oh, I'm so excited that I don't even know what I should be doing anymore. The important thing about going on a trip is to enjoy yourself. You don't have to think so hard. I'm just worried that if we don't get down to business soon, we'll take up too much of your time. <laughs> but if you insist, then let's look around. Welcome to Akara Crabs. Feel free to have a look around. Wow, what are these? They're so cute. This is our current bestseller, the Aranara Carving. Their designs are based on the fairy tales that circulate amongst children. So they're very popular with them. Miss, are you from Inazuma? Oh, this would be a great gift for you to bring back home. Oh, I know about Aranara. You two told me about them on the ship. I didn't think they'd be so cute. No wonder the kids like them. Oh, they're all so pretty. Let me take a better look. I'm a new Yoimiya would like this kind of thing. But even she might have a hard time seeing a real Aranara. Yeah, sorry Yoimiya. But we need to keep our promise to the Aranara. That Paimon doesn't think Yoimiya would mind too much. Her world's already chock full of imaginary creatures. I think I'll get this one. Ooh, that one. And the other two that you showed me earlier. Uh, you're buying that many? Yep. I'm going to give them out to Saika and the others. They're going to love them. Oh, and these carvings can also be used as prizes and matches against the Arataki gang. They'd also look great lined up by the window. Think about it. You wake up, and the first thing you see are these adorable critters. Wouldn't <laughs> they brighten up your entire day? <laughs> okay, thanks. In that case, you take your pick, too. Hmm. For some reason, Paimon thinks it kind of looks like you, Yoimiya. Now that you mention it, it kind of does. Hello, Nara Paimon. My name is Aramia. <laughs> <laughs> wow, she actually fucking imitated Nara and Nara and Nara and Nara. Is that how they talk? Hope I remember correctly. <laughs> that was really good. Wow, great memory. We only talked about Nara and Nara that one time on the boat. That's because they're so interesting. I'm pretty good at remembering those kinds of things. Of course. Thank you for your patronage. You all are an entertaining bunch. I hope you enjoy your time here in Sumeru. Ah, that's about it for Poor Ormo. 
house. Next up is Sumeru City. All right, let's get to it. Wow, this market is even busier than the one in Port Ormos. This is Treasure Street. Up from here is the Academia. Oh, and in that tree trunk is the Grand Bazaar. They're both pretty special places. I just saw a group of people come down, and they were all wearing the same outfit. Is that the Academia's uniform? That's right! They also wear hats with different designs, depending on which Darshan they're in. For example, we'll be looking for someone from Watalahis. They know a lot about stars and stuff. Does this mean that you need uniforms like those to get in and out of the Academia? Uh, Paimon doesn't think so. Um, won't we stick out if we go in like this? So even you get shy, huh? No, no, that's not what I meant. <sighs> Let's pretend you're an academia student, hard at work. Then in comes a bunch of outlanders in strange clothes who gawk and run around everywhere. Oh, Paimon kinda gets what you mean. I don't think we have to be too self-conscious, but it's still something to keep in mind. Why don't we look around here first? I've been wanting to see the Zubair Theater anyway. As for the Academia, let's go once I get myself a set of Sumeru-style clothes. There's no way she's gonna have different clothes. Paimon thinks you're overthinking it. Nilo might have some good recommendations. <laughs> Sounds good. If we can watch a performance of hers while we're at it, I think her and Nilo would get along really well. All right, I'll be looking around here. I'm leaving the meteor shower inquiry to you two. Thanks a lot. No problem. We'll be Looks like you two are in the pickle. Why not consult someone who always tells you everything she knows? <gasps> Nahida! Oh, why are you here? I'm here to meet with some researchers, but when I saw you two looking so troubled, I decided to follow. Looks like I showed up just in time. Okay, we might as well tell you. We have a friend who's come to Sumeru. Hmm, I see. Uh... Your face says that it's gonna be a long time before the next meteor shower. Um... My answer is going to be even more of a disappointment. You may have heard that the stars are related to people's fates. Yeah, lots of times! If the stars dictate destiny, then do you think that destiny is something that is unchanging and always follows predicted outcomes? Eh, you have a point. According to current Ritalahist research, a meteor shower is a celestial phenomenon that occurs due to the interference between many intricate fates. Their appearance is highly random. Some have tried coming up with ways to predict their occurrence, but the results are less than reliable. This is a far cry from folk tales that claim meteor showers come at certain times and bless all who witness them. So, you mean we won't be able to see one? I'm sorry to disappoint you two. If we tell this to Yoimiya, she'll be so disappointed. What now? There has to be something we can do. Are 
Are you two okay? It seems the news hit harder than I expected. Paimon just thinks this isn't fair to Yoimiya. I get it. From how you described her, I can see that she is a kind and caring soul. So, why don't we take a page out of her book and protect her dreams with a well-intentioned lie? Oh? How do we do that? It'll be a story about a meteor shower. You'll accompany her on a brief journey, do a bit of work here and there, and then receive the meteor shower as a reward. Oh, well, I can't summon a real meteor shower, but if it's in a dream, I can help out. Oh, that would be great, Nahida! Compared to what you've done for me, this is nothing. Use the meteor shower as a pretext to take you and me all around Sumeru. Then, when you're ready, blow this. I'll tell the Aranara in advance. Once they hear the whole story, I'm sure they'll be willing to help. Huh. Then the dream will probably be like the one we had in the Avidia Forest! When we first met Hapasia! That was a real shocker. It was hard to tell that we were even in a dream! Once the meteor shower ends and you all awaken from the dream, she'll probably realize what had happened. If you tell her the truth at that point, she should be a lot less disappointed. Mm-hmm. Paimon thinks this is the best way to simulate the meteor shower. Thanks, Nahida! <laughs> You're welcome. I'm glad I could help. Still, you two should get this story straight before you join up with your friend. If not, she's gonna see right through everything. True. Let's so we have to way. deceive you and Mia, but for a good cause. It's not like a bad. It's not bad. We're trying to do good for her. We have to so deceive what her. What we need to do is to make you and Mia believe that the meteor shower is really happening, and be super convincing at how we sell it. Hmm. If Paimon wanted to go see a meteor shower. The things Paimon would focus on the most would be... Yes, exactly! We'll say we're trying to figure these two things out, but we'll actually be bringing Yoimiya around to see the sights and enjoy local food! Oh, well... Easier said than done. We can't be too strict with our pretext, but we can't be sloppy with it either, or she'll see through it. Oh. It'd be best if we could take a unique approach to making it fantastical, just like a real fairy tale. Hmm, this is gonna be hard. Oh, that's right. Um, don't people also talk about wishing on a shooting star? If we used wishes as the center of our story... Whoa, that sounds great! All right then, we need a specific wishing spot or else the sky would be full of meteor showers. And then, while we're supposedly finding or making this device, we'll go around and have fun and eat good food! <laughs> this is shaping up to be the perfect plot! After all, the device can be anything, and the location can be wherever! As long as we get Yoimiya to enter the dream at night, things will be fine! This isn't about being smart, it's about being a good duo! The idea was yours anyway, Paima just knows what you want to say. Oh, alright, alright, let's go! Yoimiya's probably sick of waiting for us. Thanks so much. If it weren't for your help, I would have gotten lost already. It's no problem. I'll be heading home then. Just a minute, wait. Oh my this god. This is for you. This is an r, &R carving I bought in Port Ormos. I heard it's very popular with kids, so here. Have one. It's all right. I didn't do much, really. It's fine. Take it. Come on. Just look at its big, happy smile. <laughs> you can display it at home or hang it on your wheelchair. It'll cheer you up. That might sound silly to you. Like, why do you have to be happy just because it is? But that's the magic of a smile. If you don't believe me, try it. Look at it a few times every day, 
And you'll understand. Actually, I feel like I already do. You love talking, and you love smiling, too. I just don't understand why you're so... positive. I've never met anyone like you before. Sorry, I'm not very good with words. But since you say so, I'll accept your gift. Want me to take you home? It's okay. I can head back myself. Oh, great timing, you two. Who is that kid? Oh, her? Her name is Abine. I saw that she was looking quite forlorn, so I wanted to make sure she wasn't feeling left out or alone. She was pretty shy at first, but I explained that I just arrived in Sumeru and had uh, gotten lost, so I needed someone to help guide me. She agreed and we made our way back here. There were so many paths here, and they're all twisty, turny, and up and down. It's hard navigating through them all. No, she didn't want to talk about that, and I didn't ask. I get the feeling that I'll bring up some unhappy memories. But, if I had to guess, it's probably because she hasn't been able to explore the city for quite some time. All she said was that she's sick and doesn't know when she'll get better. Whenever we passed by busy crowds, she kept turning her head and taking in all the things around her. At first, I thought she was afraid that someone might bump into us. But, when I caught a glimpse in her eyes, I only saw yearning and a deep sense of loss. It's hard not to be down when something like that happens to you. At first, she didn't really want to say anything to me at all. She just gave me yes and no answer. But what I really saw was just another child. And asked all the same things everyone else did. About rugs, spices, cooking, and the differences between here and home. Eventually, I think I earned her trust. <laughs> there were many things that she liked in the city, after all. I say that, but honestly, you two probably caught the majority of what she said. Eh, gotta start somewhere. Oh, by the way, did you guys learn anything about the meteor shower? You bet we did. Big time! You're in luck, Yoimiya. You'll be able to see the meteor shower from Sumeru. Really? <laughs> That's great! If I had gone looking for it myself, I'm sure I would have missed it. Huh? Uh, what do you mean? They respond to wishes? Huh, I've never heard that one before. So it's not that you wish upon shooting stars, but that wishes summon them? <laughs> In that case, I was born ready. Don't you worry. Are you talking about how you want to use the meteor shower as inspiration for fireworks? That's why I'm here, but I wouldn't call that my wish. I don't think that alone will call the stars down for us, right? Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Wow, she's adding her own spin onto this. If that's the case, then we'll have to practice wishing a little. Can you two come with me? Let me put my thoughts together and tell me if you understand. As for what my wish is... <laughs> it's a secret for now. Yeah! And we'll take the opportunity to show you some views you've definitely never seen before. More places to see? Alright, let's go! Hmm. Good deed by you and Mia. Wow! Is that what you two were talking about? Amazing! It's huge! Well, wait. It's not going to suddenly start moving, right? Relax! It's completely still! And it's been ages! That's true. It's green from all the overgrowth on it. All right, let's go. <laughs> now this will make for quite the story. I was wondering, have you seen your brother yet? Yep, but he said that he'd meet us at the end of our journey, and then he left. I see. It seems he has his own things to worry about. But it's alright. At least you were able to talk. 
How did he look? Is he doing well? Did he change in any way? Well, according to her, nothing's really changed. She's hanging in there. <laughs> that sure is reassuring. I believe that you two will come to an understanding once your journey is over. You are siblings, after all. and almost forgot about that. Before I left Inazuma, many people heard that I was looking for a meteor shower. So they told me that they wanted to make wishes. I told them that they could write their wishes down on paper. So I ended up collecting several dozens of wishes. Whoa, that many? That's part of it, but more importantly, I've been wondering why people link meteor showers and wishes in the first place. After a lot of thought, I think I figured it out. People use fireworks to remember their most precious memories. And these memories sparkle and shine each time the fireworks fly. In other words, fireworks symbolize the past. And shooting stars make people think of wishes. Because wishes carry people's brilliant hopes and expectations for the future. One represents the past, and the other the future. They both bloom in the sky, but have completely different meanings behind them. It's really beautiful, isn't it? Very true, very true, very true. It's clear to me that I'm not the only one holding this belief. I'm sure my ancestor had similar views. I think that's how he drew inspiration from the meteor shower. His method was a wish of sorts to begin with. To join the past and future together and combine their beauty. At first, I wasn't completely serious about using the opportunity to travel abroad to see a meteor shower. But it became something like a mission once everyone had handed their wishes over to me. You and Mia. Hmm. Well said. And your Paimon thought you needed practice. Huh? Uh, that was fine. You both understand what I'm trying to say. Honestly, I thought it was pretty messy. I mean, these are all abstract topics that evoke a sense of admiration that's hard to put into words. Traveler? I did consider that possibility, and I won't lie. It'd be a real bummer if that were the case. Aww. I know that's the most realistic conclusion, and it's not like luck has to be on my side. But there's a premise to every legend, and that's belief. If I didn't take the step, it's not like a meteor shower would just rain upon me either. I wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't have known that they respond to wishes, and I wouldn't have seen all these beautiful sights in Sumeru. So I'm looking forward to the rest of our journey. Every single step of it. Aww. You really are amazing, Yoimiya. Uh, what? Oh, nothing. Paimon just thinks you're doing a good job with the wishes. Now we just need one other thing. Like we said earlier, we're gonna need to build a device. Yep, and once we use it to create an observation device, we can find where the meteor shower will be. I see. The purest ore. Hmm. Then, why don't we go back to Sumeru City and ask the blacksmith? I chatted with him a bit when Avin was showing me around. He seems really knowledgeable. I bet he'll know something. Uh, but wouldn't we be bothering him? No one knows more about ore than a blacksmith. Uh, that's true. Let's go! <laughs> I wish we could fly over. What are we gonna do? If we really ask the blacksmith, he's gonna give us funny looks for sure! <sighs> You're right. Paimon will do her best not to say anything wrong. At first, Paimon felt bad about keeping Yoimiya in the dark. But now, 
It feels like we made the right decision. Yep, that's why we're doing all this. Oh, what a what a sentimental moment with you and me. That was that was nice. Who knew someone that nice can be super freaking strong? What up, bitch? You want to use the purest material to create a star observation device? Huh. That pair of specially crafted lenses should do the job. However, purest material is too vague. It'd be better if you were more specific. Firstly, this all sounds rather, uh, strange. I never heard that legend about meteor showers. You sure you're not just messing with me? Sorry for the trouble, but we are kind of messing with someone. Sorry, Inazuma's pretty far, so maybe some key information got lost across the ocean. Still, I want to at least give it a shot. Even though the information's vague, can you help us at all? Well, sure. Why don't I use some materials that might fit the bill and create up a mock-up device for you? That'd be great! Thanks so much for your help. No need to be so polite. You're my customer. Also, this kind of project is a nice change of pace. Maybe we can just pick a random one. It's not like we're really gonna use it anyway. <sighs> no, that won't do. I don't think I can justify that to myself. If these were for ordinary use, then it'd be acceptable. Barely. But if you want a product that is top-notch, this is far from ideal. <laughs> Why are you so interested all of a sudden? Yeah, what now? Don't worry too much about the material. If you think it'll be difficult to obtain, we can get it for you. I want to try all our options. Hmm. Since we're on the topic of legends, allow me to tell you one about blacksmiths. <laughs> All of us in Sumeru know about this legendary forging material. It possesses excellent properties that are matched by no other. Using it to forge something is every blacksmith's dream. Some spend their entire lives searching for this material in vain. While others have it in their possession, yet never use it in their forge. That's because the material is too precious. Many believe themselves unworthy to work with it due to a lack of skill. In other words, not only does it represent the pinnacle of material quality, but also the culmination of a smith's skills. I constantly practice and hone myself so when I do encounter this material, we won't pass each other by like two ships in the night. So, you mean that it symbolizes dreams? Dreams, inspiration, obsession, focus. Call it what you want. But if you take it to symbolize purity, then I believe it is your goal as well. We call it Earthstone, but in truth, neither I nor my colleagues have ever seen it. It's more like a goal, and also a warning. This fits perfectly with the tale of the meteor shower! Then, why don't we go looking for it? Uh, is it even something we can find? Exactly! We're chasing down a legend, after all. What's true or not doesn't matter as much. If true. we do find it, that's a big win for us. And if we don't, maybe we can still find something that could be used as a substitute. When you put it like that... Hey, excuse me. If I might intrude, have you seen a child in a wheelchair? Uh-oh. Yeah, she and I were hanging out not that long ago. What's the matter? Do you know where she went? She hasn't returned home yet. Huh? I wonder why. When we split up, she said she was heading home. Oh, dear. Oh. I'm sorry if I seem worked up. I'm Avine's mother. She's been depressed ever since she fell ill and was forced to use a wheelchair. 
I'm concerned about her mental health. If she does something reckless because she's not in a good state of mind... It's okay, don't worry. We'll help you find her. I can't say that I know her very well, but I think she just has a lot on her mind and is trying to come to terms with her feelings. That's reassuring. <sighs> she doesn't want to tell me anything, probably because she thinks nothing she says would make either of us feel better. But I can't tell what she's thinking if we don't communicate. I'm worried that I'll panic and make things worse by saying the wrong thing. Don't worry. I'm sure she has a reason for wanting some space to herself at the moment. We should just be open and understanding with her. But that does bring me to a question I've been mulling over in my head. Do you think there's something else going on in her life? Not that I'm aware of. I just know the illness was a big blow to her. She's always been physically active. She absolutely loved to run and jump, and she told me that she wanted to become a great adventurer someday. But after she became ill, she lost strength in both legs. She hasn't been able to stand since. We've consulted with countless doctors, but they're all stumped. They said all she can do is slowly recuperate. No one can say for sure if she'll ever stand or walk again. She believes that her legs will never recover, and her dreams of seeing the world would be forever shattered. It's... This was all too sudden. Too unfair. Okay, I understand. I'll find a way to bring her around. Sorry, but it looks like we'll have to put our meteor shower search on hold. We're coming with you! Aww. Mr. Blacksmith, do you remember seeing a child in a wheelchair? Sorry, afraid not. I've been keeping my eyes on my anvil. But you're looking for someone. I suggest dropping in on Sadeg. He's my supplier. If anyone's aware of the comings and goings in Treasure Street, it'd be him. Do you know where we can find him? He's probably resting just over there. It's not far. Got it. Thanks for your help with everything. We'll go over there and see what we can find out. Don't worry, I don't think she's gone too far. Thank you so much. He and I will continue asking around in the city. If you find her, please. Is that let the me dad know. or just a soldier? Yami is so nice, bro. And hella fucking strong. <laughs> you mention it that does ring a bell i was moving some boxes at the time and i saw her pushing her wheelchair so hard she was panting i asked if she needed help but she didn't respond as if she didn't hear me sounds like there really was something on her mind yeah that was the impression i got too what's wrong did she go missing yes so we're looking for her i see that's rather worrying i know I'll ask my friends and see if they know anything. She went that way. If you ask people as you go, hopefully you'll track her down. Okay, thanks. If you find out anything, don't forget to tell the people with the green scarves. <laughs> you mean the core of 30. Don't worry, I got it. Hmm. She said people with the green scarves like her. Like him. Core of 30. Look for Avon and ask about her whereabouts. Oh. So ask. Excuse me. Uh, we're looking for a child in a wheelchair? Oh. I remember her. She went that way not too long ago. I asked her what she was doing. It's my job after all. She just said she had something important to do and didn't want to be disturbed. That seems a little weird. Whatever the case, she left the city. If you follow that road, you should be able to find her. Gotcha. Thanks a lot.
Shut up, alarm. Hello there. Did a child in a wheelchair pass this way? A wheelchair? Oh, so that's what it was. I didn't get a good look, but something going pretty fast went sliding down that slope over there. Oh no, how dangerous. For sure. There's terrain of all sorts outside the city. And if that was the kid... Got it. It was over there, right? We'll be going now. Thanks. She fell? No. Hey, are you all right? I fell off my wheelchair. I can't move around without it. Why? Why? It's okay. You're okay. You're not hurt. I'll take care of her. Can you two look for her wheelchair? No problem. We'll be right back. Sliding down. Sliding down. <laughs> All the way down here. Look! It's the wheelchair! So the hilly churls took it! Oh wow. Get it back before they damage it. <laughs> Whoa! Jesus Christ! That was something. All right, we're in luck. Looks like the wheelchair's still working. That's good. Or else my family would have to pay for another one. You feeling any better? I know that must have been really scary for you. Mm. It's all right. You're safe now. We'll bring you back. Uh... Do you feel okay telling me why you had to come here, despite the risks? If you don't want anyone else to know, we'll definitely keep it a secret. That's right! You can trust us! The Aranara Carving. My bestest friend. He went missing. The carving? You mean the one I gave you? Yeah. My illness is really bad. It's not just my legs. I've forgotten a lot of stuff, too. I used to love running. I loved the feeling it gave me, and the sound of wind rushing by my ears. But the longer I sit, the cloudier those memories get. I'm starting to forget how it feels to love something. But when I saw that wood carving, I remembered that I once had a best friend. He'd always run with me. Wait! Was he an Aranara? Um, Paimon meant that it couldn't have been an Aranara, right? They're just fairy tale characters. But they aren't. They're real. They couldn't be more real. Hey, I understand. Okay, let's calm down. Tell us what happened so we can help you. Sorry. I got carried away. And... I don't have any evidence to show you. Everyone says you can't see Aranara anymore once you become an adult. You have to say goodbye to your Aranara friends forever. I can't remember his name, or how he looked like. And soon, I'll even forget that he used to run with me. I don't want to become an adult. Not like this. I understand now. When you saw that carving, you were reminded of your friend. You came out here to look for him and remember that friendship. No matter how difficult things got. Isn't that right? Yes. I, I want to see him. I want to tell him that I I'm not angry with him. And that I didn't want to break our promise. But then... This happened. I'm not angry with him. Not at all. Cheer up. Something beautiful has happened. Beautiful. That's right. You remembered something about the Aranara, haven't you? 
once you start remembering more things, you'll be able to find your friend again. And I'll help you. Yoimiya, does this mean that you can also see our Nara? Sorry, I don't know if I can. I've only just arrived in Sumeru. Maybe I haven't seen one yet. Or maybe I can't see them at all. But that doesn't matter. Whether I can see them or not doesn't change my belief that you can. <gasps> what do we do? Paimon really wants to help her. She didn't deserve any of this. Not her illness, or being separated from her friend, but... Huh? Me? Sure. Um, sorry. Wait here for a moment. I'll be right back. What's wrong? You look so serious all of a sudden. Oh, did you think I was overpromising back there? Don't worry, I have experience with this kind of thing. To her, reuniting with her R&R friend is the result. But recapturing her past joy and belief in herself is the process. And that's where our help is needed. I'm guessing that her sudden illness made her feel like she may not be able to realize her dreams anymore. It also made it difficult for her to hold on to the happy memories and dreams she had. Everyone has their own imagination. After some chance coincidence, she met Nara Nara. So as long as we help her rediscover that same feeling she once had, her Nara Nara will return naturally. Oh, so that's what you're thinking. Adults only want to believe in objective reality. In doing so, they may unintentionally do harm to the innocent fantasies of children. But I think there are ways to get even subjective things back. So how about it? Want to help me out? <laughs> Looks like all this excitement made you forget your original goal again. If we didn't do anything to help, I wouldn't be able to watch a meteor shower, even if it appeared right now. And would the stars really want their caller to have such a heartless soul? Oh. What are you trying to say? Because we can actually summon the Ara Nara. <laughs> You're a good Nara. You're eh. eh. You're a good Nara, you and me. I'll apologize to them later. <laughs> good Nara? I don't get it. R really? Just watch. We have some tricks up our sleeves. Oh, so this is an R Nara. I'm the one who should be apologizing. Sorry, uh, let me explain. I know that you only want to be seen by people you trust. It's rash of me to butt in. But this girl once had an Aranara as her best friend, and they haven't met in a very long time. She's been quite ill, and her world has been turned upside down. It's been so long since she's been able to see her friend that even her memory of him has become hazy. Parting with a friend like that is too sad, and she never wanted that to happen. That's why I want to help her. Her world is still very small. Too small for all the sadness she has to bear. As things are, all she can do is sit alone and think about how happiness is leaving her little by little. About how life has been so unfair to her. Yes. Maybe we're already used to bad luck and we know how to deal with feelings of sorrow and disappointment. But this is her first time dealing with any of this. Life can trip anyone up. What's most important in times like this is for us to support one another. Huh? What do you mean by that?
so that means uh, thank you thanks for trusting us The R and R is also involved in this whole quest with you and Mia. Makes sense. Dreams, but I'll never be able to stand again. Even if I can recover, I don't know how long that'll take. My heart? Huh? He's gone just like that? It looks like the sky here has changed somewhat. My heart. Huh? She's glowing? Oh, she's standing. Maybe. Let's follow it. She's like that reckless character in animes, but also kind. I don't know. I need these for Kale. <laughs> Wait, oh, I have infinite stamina? Because of running and shit, I guess? Huge 
mushrooms here. They're big enough to lie on. That's not what they're for. Let me show you. Oh, so it's for jumping? Watch this! So, this is our destination? But Paimon doesn't see an Aranara, just this big stone. I'm so happy. I almost forgot how it feels to be this happy. You know, at first, it felt like my world had shrunk down to a tiny space. But as long as I continue moving forward, new sights will always appear in front of me. And my world will keep expanding before my eyes. Even though I don't know how I did it, I know I have you all to thank. Oh, that's not important. What's important is that you remember the joy of going through the world. Our memories don't just symbolize our past. They can also shine a light in our future. Once you find the hope in your heart again, that happiness will come back to you. Yes. Thank you, you and Mia. Thank you all. Let's keep looking for Arashani. It doesn't look like he's here. Yeah. Uh... Then why would the star lead us here? I don't know how to explain this. I don't know what it is, but... It feels very familiar. Almost like it's a part of me. I know. Could this stone be your Earthstone? Er... Earthstone? It's a very rare ore that symbolizes a person's aspirations and dreams. Since you can see it, that means you've found what you've lost. Is uh -oh. that how it works? It's just like in fairy tales. I thought I'd stopped believing in those. But I'm glad that I found that belief again. Them. Hey, Yoimiya! Hey! <sighs> well, we have no choice. We passed through, but nothing seems to have changed. Arashani? Aranara sure of a flair for magical journeys. They not only helped Devin find her best friend, but they also showed us what an Earthstone is. Oh, uh, we have to look for one of our own later to make the purest lens. Yep. Hmm. It's kind of funny, but Paimon thinks we can actually do it. But we have to bring her back to Sumeru City first. <sighs> her mother must be worried sick. It... The dream ended. We dreamed a most lovely dream. Don't look so lonely. He's right next to you. Arashani! You're still here! It's okay. I understand. This happened because I lost sight of myself. But I think I understand now. Yoemiya's right. Everyone gets bad luck, but we had to support each other through unlucky times. Thanks for helping me rediscover my memories and dreams. I won't let your work go to waste. <laughs> You've also helped us a lot, so don't be so humble. To be honest, we didn't know where to start with Earthstone. But now that we're on this track, I think we'll find it easy. Yoimiya, you need this Earthstone because you want to see a meteor shower? 
Yep. Oh, once we find it, you should come with us. If that's how things are... I'm happy to lend you my Earthstone. Hmm. to me and then the light turned into this is this what you needed thank you i didn't expect us to solve our problem like this all right timed it give it a go not that i know how to use it but let's see what my intuition says where are you where are you oh i think i see it oh it was a uh, pretty obvious Come on, I'll lead the way. Once we're done watching the meteor shower, I'll accompany you home. Also, thank you for helping us. Uh, actually, let me scrap the pleasantries and give you a heartfelt compliment instead. You all are great storytellers. Red Nara. Oh wow! That's nice. That was nice. I was not expecting her to like just take us and jump off. Watching that forever. 
That was the realest, grandest, most magical dream I've ever had. Paimon, too! Paimon didn't expect you to just pull us onto that shooting star, though. <laughs> Honestly, I didn't think about it at all. I just thought it'd be a shame if we didn't try something crazy. <laughs> you know me. It really doesn't matter to me if our experience was real or a dream. I really should thank you two, though. You set all this up as a backup plan because you knew that meteor showers are hard to catch, right? Don't worry, I loved it so, so, so much! I think this ranks as the absolute best gift I've ever been given. Oh, whew. That's good. Paimon was afraid you might be angry after hearing the truth. Why would I be? I dreamed about helpful, friendly, cute Aranara. I dreamed that we ran and jumped atop large mushrooms and we discovered Earthstone in a very unexpected way. And when I thought we had woken hmm. up, the next part was even more amazing. From her heart, a fiend brought forth Earthstone glasses. We found meteors that blew up from the Earth. And we even became one with the shooting stars themselves. That's right. Dreams themselves may be imaginary, but they're also experiences that can never be relived or replicated. If we were sticklers about truth and fiction, we would have missed out on so much beauty and emotion. <laughs> you sure know your way with words. Paimon's gonna bump you up a few places on the Paimon's best friend list. Oh man, if only I dreamed. Like when I when I go to sleep I don't dream like I don't know like I don't I don't know why like I, I hear like all my um my family members they say like they they talk about their dreams like what they uh like what their dream was about and like my friends do a lot and everything and like me I I rarely ever if if I do I don't remember it like I like I don't know but like yeah I, I just like I'm literally falling asleep and then the next like I fall asleep and the next second I'm up and it's morning or afternoon. We really have to thank those lovely carvings. The wood carvings? Yeah. If we hadn't seen those wood carvings, then we wouldn't have dreamed of such cute Arunara. Huh. <laughs> Don't worry. I know. I think they're very cute, and I'm happy to protect them. Well, it's almost time. Let's send her home. A nice place. I'll be back for sure. You will always be welcome here. Avine would be happy to see you again. It's a deal. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> you got it. Yoimiya, before you go back, I want to tell you about my new dream. I want to travel to Inazuma on my own and watch a fireworks show there. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> I didn't expect to be introduced to new customers while on vacation. Don't worry. I'll make you some fireworks that you'll never forget. You do as well. No matter how busy your adventures get, remember to come back to Inazuma. Well, you gotta come and watch the fireworks this meteor shower inspired as they soar high in the sky. Sounds like a plan. Every day and forever. Shut up. Oh, yeah. There you go. By the way, have a look at this. That's right. This is the one you helped me pick. And you said it looked kind of like me. I went to buy another one. This one's for you. Look at it whenever you're feeling down. Who knows? Maybe you'll raise your spirits. If nothing else, you'll know that I'm supporting you all the way. 
Of course, meeting in person is still better. <laughs> okay, I'll be heading back now. I'm sure we'll meet again soon. I really loved the trip you prepared for me. In fact, I'm totally impressed. No matter where you two go, I know that our friendship and its warmth will support you. So, go forward. To the end of your journey, and to the ends of this world! See you around! That was nice. That was a really cool quest. Talk to Susan. Who is Susan? Oh my god. Is it like a picture? Oh yeah, this woman's a picture lady. Yeah, I knew it. And just like that, there are no more quests, except for Lenny's, uh, Lenny's world quest, or story quest, that I am not doing now. Let's go back and do that boss again. Wait a downpour. Nothing will get done until it clears. Let this be a lesson to those who yesterday said I'll do it tomorrow. I think I'm gonna end the stream here now because there's nothing else I can do. I don't want to do Lenny's world quest now. Oh yeah, what do I? What do I? Where should I leave off usually? Where should I? Because I remember in Monster every single time. For some reason, I don't know why. Don't ask why. Every single time I like about to log off or about to get off, I always go to this location. I just leave, but that was when I was in Mondstadt, and when I was in Leeway, I think it was... Leeway, I think it was this one. Oh wow, it's right in here. Yeah, I think it was this one in Leeway, and then Inazuma was this one over here. No, it was not this one, it was this one. 
it was this one in Leewit and in Azuma. And then in Sumeru, it was this one. Like, every single time, at, like, right when I'm about to do this, hold square and quit, I'll teleport to one of these locations. But now, since I'm in Fontaine, which one should this one be? Should, should it be one of the, in the court? Uh, should it be here? It could be here, honestly. This place is really small. Or it could be here. Could be here. I don't like that one. Could be here. I don't like this one either. Or it could be here. I might do here because this one's closest to, uh, like the crafter and the adventurer's guild. Where's the blacksmith? Oh, he's right here. Oh, she's right here. I forgot it's a woman. Uh, monster. Oh, wait. There's a, there's a food shop thing there. I can probably go and get, uh, get new recipes and stuff. Let's go do that real quick. Here? No. Here. Yeah. Fanta. Isn't that Fanta? <laughs> oh, coffee beans. Might as well. There's also a stove here. Might as well cook the 20 stuff that I need. Hold on, let's see what I haven't seen. Yeah, I haven't done this one yet, right? Yeah, I haven't. Get all 15. Excuse me? Alright, so that's... Tw that's 15. I need to make 20 more. Oh, I need to make 5 more. What is this? Well, I don't really want to do that right now because of, uh... It's kind of, uh... Oh, and I only have a certain amount of flowers. What's this? Oh, this is stuff in Sumeru I can make. There you go. Who's calling me? All the way in Orlando? Ah. Uh. Wrong, wrong number. Okay. Uh, ooh, I could do this one. Stamina. Who's the person that goes double the product with stamina? Yunjin, okay. I just, I just need to make five. Three. Four. Five. There you go. Just like that. There. And then... Oh, I also need to go to the blacksmith and forge Forge 20 items, which is already there. I already have it forged No! Did 
There you go. Three requests and three bounties. Yeah. All oh, these. Let's do that real quick. This realm is... Where's that other stuff? What? Where is it? What should I make? I don't want to make too much of something. Oh, I can make these. There. But where are they? Aren't they supposed to be here and I can buy them? Right here. Wait, that counted as mining? Okay. Uh, I'll do these in another day. Oh yeah, I do need to get this done. But I don't have, I currently don't have the thing for it. I don't have the resin for this. Or do I? Oh yeah, I don't. Alright, let's go, let's just go back and get that boss again. How close are we to making... How close are we to making Yoimiya level 90? Not Yoimiya, Yanfei. Oh. So like, another boss or two of them. She has a major ascension, ascension stat. Pyro damage bonus, that's insane. Like, what else did I make? Oh. All right, let's go. Pyro. Hold the line. Born of ice and frost. Got the, the shield. No touching. 
can't really use fire. Yeah, it's low, less damage. Four more. It'll take. It'll take two more, no matter what. All right, that's fine. All right. So what did I say I was gonna leave off on? Well, I still don't even have the these. So like these could be also pretty good, but they're not near the city. I could I could leave off here. Yeah, this seems like a good scenery to leave off on. Or I could leave off here, where it has like a good scenery here. Somewhat, kind of. But I did say I was going to leave off here, but this doesn't really have that good of a scenery. You know, I'll, I'll leave off here. Leave off here. Uh, I could just, I could change, I could change it any time. Okay, well, I did everything that I needed to do already, like, the, 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 the shit came out, I don't know when, but I did everything within, like, a day or two, so, it'd take long. I hope you get to see more of Navia, though, that Navia is pretty cool, I like Navia. 